Good morning, everybody. This is Quinn Baum with Names and Numbers. And today we've got the first in a series of videos about goal setting, how you can set good goals, and what goals can accomplish. And today I wanted to talk about the difference between goals and habits, and how you can set good goals to establish awesome habits that will lead you to success. So I'm going to say this over and over and over again today. We set goals to establish really good habits, and it's the habits that lead us to success. If you think about it, goals tend to be more short-term. They require a lot of willpower, a lot of thought, whereas habits just are very automatic. They don't require a lot of willpower. They just kind of happen. So... We want to set goals that help us establish really good habits so that the habits can move us forward. Uh, goals are like the training wheels and habits are like the big kid, big kid bike that we want to ride. Charles Duhigg wrote a book called The Power of Habit. I love this book and I highly recommend it. And he starts the book with a story about a guy named Eugene. Well, in I think 1993, Eugene suffered a brain infection that wiped his short-term memory and erased about 30 years of this poor guy's uh, life between 1960 and 1990. Well, shortly after the infection, Eugene and his wife Barbara moved to a new neighborhood uh, to be closer to one of their daughters. And Barbara would take Eugene on a walk twice a day. They'd do the same route around the neighborhood. Well, one day, Barbara walked around the house. She couldn't find Eugene. And, uh, you know, she panicked a little bit. That's a, a, a worry. So she runs outside. She runs up and down the street. And uh, she can't find Eugene. She bursts back through the door to call the police and report a missing person. And there's Eugene sitting on the couch watching television. Well, Barbara's a little confused, very relieved, and then she notices a pile of pine cones sitting on the coffee table. And she recognizes the pine cones from a tree that they pass on their walk every day. Eugene, despite the fact that he could not even remember the names of his grandchildren, had somehow internalized that route. It had become a habit. Well, Barbara tried to prevent him from doing it in the future, but she would tell him not to go out, and Eugene would forget that she said anything. The first couple of times, Barbara would follow him out of the house, but every time Eugene would go out for a walk, he would come back. It was ingrained in his animal brain. He didn't have to think about it, and that is the power of habit. It becomes autopilot. Now, if you had stopped Eugene halfway through his walk and asked him where he lived, he couldn't tell you. But if you followed him, he would automatically walk directly back to his home and through the front door and sit down on the couch. And that is the power of habits. They get ingrained. They don't require any willpower to get them done. Okay, so you're a sales rep. How do we apply the power of habit to achieving what we want to? Well, maybe it has something to do with getting to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's easy sometimes for sales reps who work on their own to kind of fudge on the 8 o'clock thing, but if you set a goal to get to work at 8 o'clock every morning for a week, and then you worked on it, and then the next week you did the same thing, slowly that would get easier and easier until it just became habit. You don't need any more willpower. You don't need to be thinking about it. It just automatically happens. Another great example might be asking for referrals. You set a goal to ask for referrals at the end of every sales call that you meet that week and you have to think about it. You may have to write a note down to remember that that's what you're supposed to do. And you have that goal for a week and then you do it again for another week and you do it again for another week and then you do it over and over again and pretty soon it becomes ingrained. It becomes a habit. It doesn't require any willpower. Asking for referrals just becomes a part of your sales call and at the end of every sales call it just happens. You don't have to think about it. So there's one last thing I want to talk about today, and that is, is what do you do with a really big goal? What do you do with one that maybe covers a really long time frame? Again, we want to take that goal, and as much as possible, we want to condense it down into what are the daily habits, what are the things that you can do on a daily basis to achieve that long-term goal. 
So let's play this broken record one more time. We make goals to help us establish really good habits. We want to take a goal that requires thought and willpower and turn it into something that is autopilot, a habit that we don't even have to think about. Again, we can take a big goal, one that has a long time frame, and if we can reduce it down into a daily component that creates a habit for us, we'll have long-term success. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go ahead and hit the like button below if you learned anything new today. And don't forget to subscribe. That way you'll receive alerts on when I drop my next video on goal setting on the interwebs. This is Quinn Baum with Names and Numbers. Go out and make a great week.